Okay guys, uh, here we go. This is the video that I um, promised a couple of my subscribers and a couple of my subscribers uh, asked me to do it. So um, here it goes. First of all, this is a Marlin 1894 in 44 Magnum. Cowboy gun they call them. Liver action. Ten, uh, ten shots in the magazine and you can have one in the chamber and it's got a cross bolt safety. If you push it from the left to the right, it's it safe. If you push it from the right to the left, it shows red, and that means that it is uh, it will fire. If there's a shot in the chamber, there will be a discharge. But right now, the rifle is safe, completely empty. Nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. Safety is number one priority, so whenever you go to clean your rifle, you're gonna make sure the first thing you check is make sure that it is unloaded. So absolutely nothing in the in the in the chamber and obviously nothing coming through from the magazine, so that means it's safe. You have to make sure that you visually and you physically check that there's nothing in there. Okay? Another thing, um, you gotta make sure you use a good quality for this set of uh, screwdrivers so that you don't damage the uh, the uh, screws on your rifle. I got myself Brownells Magna tip, and uh, you get a whole a whole bunch of different um, size screws. It's a good investment. These things are guaranteed for life. I think Brownells um, guaranteed them for life. The, the magnetic tip, so they'll they'll clip into the tip of the screwdriver. They won't be coming off. And then once you pick up the screw as well, it'll be it'll be magnetized to the tip of the screwdriver, and then that just makes it easier to pull something out or to put it in place. What we're gonna do is a full disassembly, which means removing the stock, removing all the the bolt, removing all the internal parts, removing the uh, the bottom plate to the trigger guard. Uh, and everything and I'm even gonna take off the the forward grip the tubular magazine to clean inside the magazine just basically a complete strip uh, then you'll be able to clean it properly and know that every single part of the rifle is completely completely clean we set the cross bolt uh, safety to fire and uh, we lower the hammer all the way all the way forward and now we remove the stock just check the size of the screw that you're trying to remove and then use the appropriate uh, tip to take it off okay this is a fairly long screw and it just needs a few turns to come out there you go so now we just pull back on the stock and it comes right off set your stock aside you can you can visually check and see how the timber looks if the oil is getting in there it'll weaken the wood so you don't put too much oil on your timber because um, it'll seep in it'll weaken the timber and then you're gonna end up having to replace your stock because it will start wobbling around you know a few years down the track this is um, American walnut okay the next uh, step we remove the main spring from the hammer strap now the reason the reason why the hammer has to be all the way forward because if you if you've got it in the cock position then the spring will be under tension it'll be a lot harder to take out so you need to have it all the way forward all the way to the to the back of the bolt okay because then that relieves the tension see if you cock it then that spring is compressed and it's under a lot of pressure so you put it all the way forward and then you're able to take this out this has a little notch on the side here you just need to take it out of there taking it out is easy putting it back in there is um, can be a little bit difficult but I'll show you a trick when we go to put the rifle back together put your parts aside give them a quick quick check no rust no undue wear and tear, just the normal sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, no rust. Okay, now 
we basically have to cock the hammer this time back so that we can remove the the bolt um, in order to remove the bolt we basically take it back and we undo this screw here the lever uh, the lever handle see there you go the the screw is magnetized. Can you see that? Okay. There's your lever. No rust. No undue <laughs> wear and tear. It's so good. Okay. Put it on the side. Okay, now you take the bolt out. Now, we need to get the shell extractor out. I usually just use a pair of tweezers. Okay, I've got myself a couple of different types of tweezers. These ones remain under tension, so you don't even have to hold them. They'll close themselves up. See that? I bought these at Bunnings. So you can use either one, the ones that you have to actually keep pressed, or the ones that keep themselves pressed. So, up to you. Basically, that it shouldn't really need to be pushed, but if you have to, you can push it from the other side. It comes right out, and it just comes comes out. It's a little piece of metal. You can see the little pin. You can see the little pin. It's got a little a little piece of metal that sticks through the side of the rifle and keeps it where it's supposed to be. The bolt basically rides along this face here and keeps it under tension so that when the extractor grabs the shell and it brings it past as the bolt goes back this will flick this will flick the uh, the shell out the empty shell out or or a live or a live round if you're unloading the rifle that way this will push the shell out all right so we just put that aside what do we do next um, I haven't done this for a while so I'm just to make making sure that you guys understand what I'm doing I'm trying to go slowly otherwise I'd be just going for it myself bang 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 um, I just want to do it step by step so you guys um, can see what I'm doing okay so if you say we're out in the field and you just wanted to give your rifle a quick clean then you wouldn't remove the stock because you wouldn't need to remove the internals so you would only take out the bolt remove the lever take out the bolt and the extractor and then you'll be able to give your rifle a clean uh, with a rod from the back nice and clean when you're hunting you don't necessarily have to take it all apart you wouldn't want to lose a screw or a piece uh, apart out in the bush once you drop something on the ground somewhere that it's full of debris it's it'll be almost impossible finding it and that's it your rifle's finished you can't use that until you come back home and, and get a replacement part we need to we need to now make sure the hammer is all the way forward um, against the frame so we can remove the hammer pivot screw which is which is the screw the large screw which is underneath the safety the cross bolt safety this um, this screw here tends to come loose as you use your rifle as you shoot this um, this screw has a habit of coming loose and uh, so maybe when you reassemble it you um, you might need to put a little bit of um, removable Loctite okay perhaps I should have explained a little bit better in order to remove in order to remove that cross bolt screw you need to depress this little lever this little notch that protrudes out of the bottom here because the tension there's a spring that keeps the keeps the trigger under tension 
Um, so basically, you need to push that up so the trigger can go back. I don't know if you caught that. Okay. You've got this little notch behind the trigger here. See if I can see it. Can you see it there? Yeah. Um, this little notch here has to be pushed in in order for the trigger to be able to go back and release the tension so that you can put the the cross bolt or pull the cross bolt screw out the, the trigger pivot screw sorry I'll try to I'll try to do it as, as much as I can so so I'm gonna I'm gonna push it and then push pull the trigger back and then once once the trigger is in position then the tension is taken and you should be able to place your hammer in line and and the screw will be able to come out it won't be under tension because if you if you do it the other way if you let it go then that will be pushing it the tension will be pushing it so it's it's more most important when you're putting it back together but you also need to do the same thing in order to get the screw out the piv the trigger pivot screw so there you go that's out now okay so now we turn this um, rifle upside down and we're gonna undo we're gonna undo this uh, screw that's here just behind the forward uh, grip so when we undo that then this piece the bottom plate will be able to come out in order for this bottom part to come out we need to remove that screw and we also need to remove this screw so it doesn't really matter which one you take out but you'll need to remove both so yeah these screws are a little bit loose now take note the side screw here the side screw is shorter than this one okay so now we'll take the bottom one out the bottom screw you can see you can see the size here the bottom screw is the longest the side screw is a little bit shorter anyway you'll be able to see it when it comes out of the rifle you should be able to see it the screw on the right is slightly longer than the other this is the bottom screw and this is the side support screw okay we put those away now we remove the trigger plate basically all you do there once the, the screws are removed just basically pull on it Yep. that basically just comes out it's a single piece that holds your your trigger here which has got a, a, a spring mechanism here when the rifle needs to shoot the lever comes underneath here and it pushes this thing up but with your fingers it is very very hard it's part of the part of the trigger mechanism and it needs that spring tension okay so that when you're pulling your trigger you feel that tension it's not like a loose piece of metal just dangling there it's gotta it's gotta be controlled so as as you pull on it the spring acts and it it gives you the control to control the trigger when when the release reaches the point where it releases the shot so basically you leave that as is you don't you don't go removing this um, this this spring or anything like that there's no need that just gets put aside so all we gotta do now is we take out this thing called the locking lug these um, your shell carrier sits in the middle here and it and it, um, it, 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 it moves in the middle here and it works um, this piece keeps everything in line and it also um, it also locks the bolt once the bolt is closed, when the when the handle is closed, this will keep the bolt in place. As you can see here, it comes out of the back. That keeps your bolt 
locked and in place and basically it goes into this notch here yeah can you see that that hole in your bolt bolt the locking lug just bolts comes underneath and it goes around there like that you know basically it'll help to keep your bolt in place okay It'll obviously be under tension, but that, that that keeps your bolt in place for when the shot gets fired. It just locks it in place and it, it can contain the pressure. Okay, so now your locking light comes out. You're going to need to clean that as well. That's got to be pretty clean because obviously it's got to fit properly. Okay, now we turn the rifle this way so that the the opening is facing away from us and then we need to remove the shell carrier screw it's called the shell carrier pivot screw again these screws need to be tight but they don't need to be completely and utterly all the way to the to the to the hilt because um, as long as they're as long as they're properly screwed in, they're not they're not gonna come out. Um, yeah, it's a good idea to, to check, make sure your, your screws are, are all the way in before you go hunting. You don't want to be losing a screw out in the bush. All right, now, basically your shell carrier, shell carrier should slide out. All right. So, this this is the part that was giving me giving me trouble this is the this is the part that was giving me trouble basically the way it works is your when when uh, when you cock it back this drops out and then a new shell comes out comes out of the tubular magazine as you cock the the lever closed, this will get will get pushed up, and then as it comes up, the bolt comes behind it and it pushes it into the chamber, and and this gets pushed down and blocks the magazine, the tube, so that the next bullet basically gets stopped um, until until you fire it, eject the next one. And then the next one gets pushed out by the spring, and again the whole the whole cycle begins again. It gets pushed up. As it goes up, the bolt comes behind it and pushes it into the chamber. Pushes it into the uh, into the into the chamber, and then and so on and so forth. So for some reason, mine was not uh, was not working. So um, had to be replaced. Um, now at this stage. It's entirely up to you if you want to remove the loading gate. Basically, that that is held in place by this little screw here. Uh, up to you if you want to remove it and, and clean it and whatever, or check it for rust or whatever. In this case, we'll we'll remove it just so that you guys can see. But in order to clean all these parts and everything, you don't really need it. It's up to you. Up, entirely up to you if you want to move it or remove it or not. This should be able to get it out. It's a very, very, very tiny little screw, and basically, you you, you don't want to lose it. Without a loading gate out in the bush, you can't use your rifle. You, you, it'll become a uh, single shot. All right, so you don't want to lose that screw. I usually put it in here just to make absolutely certain it doesn't go anywhere. The loading gate, basically, it's just a little piece of metal that gets held in place by that screw so it goes through the side and then it just holds it and then that under tension it the, the shells get pushed in get pushed in through and as they go in this keeps them in they don't they, they can't come back out through the loading gate they have to come through the action because I've got a scope on my rifle um, the actual hammer cannot come out. It's captured in here because normally you would have to pull it forward and out this way. But because because of the way it's designed, 
this can move this way but it cannot go past this point so I cannot I cannot take it out because it, it touches the scope at the top here so I want to leave my scope on so this just stays there I can still get to it to give it a, queen, a clean just give it a quick wipe here and here put a little lubricant there a little bit of lubricant here just to make sure the rust doesn't get to that but basically it just stays in there it's captured in there you leave the safety in there you don't need to move that you can clean around it you can clean all in, inside here Pull this. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, it's fairly clean. It's like a mirror in there. So basically, the, your rifle is now fully disassembled. You can. You can get into all these pieces and give them a really good clean, clean them all out, make sure they're nice and lubricated. You can use, you know, an oily rag or basically wipe them clean and make sure all the threads are the threads are clean. Make sure you check them for wear and tear and if you if they're really banged up, especially the trigger pivot screw, tends to because it's so hard to put it back in, tends to lose some of the thread. So you need to keep an eye on that one. All these, all these areas that are shiny are the areas that you need to make sure are clean and also well lubricated because obviously they're gonna be they're gonna be rubbing against all the pieces. And if you want your rifle to action nice and smoothly and and freely, you gotta make sure they're nice and clean and also um, well well lubricated uh, before you reassemble the rifle. Now I've seen some people that get uh, polished paste and really really 1200 to 800 um, uh, sandpaper and they polish all these all these shiny areas polish them give them a really smooth finish uh, as you can see some of the areas are shinier than others that that little bit there at the top all you see that that there is is the top part is shinier than the bottom so don't worry about polishing that but make sure that this is nice and clean and it's also nice and uh, well lubricated probably the side here the back here a little bit that you can see the bolt you can see the imprint of the bolt here when when the shot goes off there's pressure against that so you can you can almost work out a semicircle there I don't know if you can pick it up you can just sort of see a mark there along here so basically the the bolt the bolt would uh, sit on there like that and then when the shot goes off obviously the pressure the pressure would be pushing against backwards that way boom so or is it the other way around yeah that way that way So yeah, that, that holds the bolt, and uh, as it fires, obviously the pressure behind, when the explosion happens inside the, the chamber, the hammer pushes the pushes the the bolt through, and pushes the the firing pin. Sorry, the firing pin comes through the back. So as you can see, this little metal piece is pushed, pushed down, held in place, lines up the, the bolt, and then when the bolt gets pushed through, that's what activates your, your shell. That's, that hits the primer at the back, of the, the back of the bullet, and then detonates the primer, ignites the gunpowder, and the gases expand. Um, thousands of times in volume so all that pressure builds and the only thing that can happen is basically the brass expands and it hugs the inside of the chamber and then the, the, the only thing that can happen is the bullet gets pushed into the into the barrel starts going through the rifling starts spinning and then it obviously happens in a fraction of a second 
and all the gases and everything only have one way to go which is forward and all, all of this at the back here is being held is being held by the rifle and it's not going to go back um, that's why the lever the lever closes and then that basically shuts the gate behind the bullet and says right you can only go one way and that's forward through the barrel through the muzzle um, and then um, that's how it works and then once it's fired then the extractor you can see the extractor grabs the the shell as it comes back out as it comes back out through this little ejector is running through this groove here I don't know if you can see it yet it's running through this groove here probably this way you can, you can see I'm going to try to light it up uh, anyway it comes out to the, to the back as the bolt moves backwards the, remember this is being held in place on the side of the rifle but it runs along this groove here and so this little edge here you can just see this little metal sticking out pushes pushes on the shell um, and it gets ejected as the bolt goes backwards this catches on the bullet and boom it pushes it out and then this flicks it out of the out of, out of the rifle so basically flicks it out flicks it out this way and it, it's out um, okay maybe I digressed a little bit there but you need to know how your rifle, uh, how all the parts fit in. You need to understand how they all work. Okay, so let's um, let's do now another video, uh, and we'll take the forward grip. We'll take the magazine tube out. We'll take the forward grip out, and uh, I'll show you how that um, how that works. Okay, cheers, guys. Jeff Williams, and Jay Lang. You're listening to CC Mixer. Always.